OK, so uh, during the break there, we were just discussing King Charles's plans. So the plan is to build 2,000 homes in Faversham in Kent. Um, uh, he's looking to create an ideal town. Yes, and locals say they're not convinced. There are worries that the new town will ruin Faversham's charm. So, uh, is King Charles getting involved in something that's none of his business? Should he stick to royal duties? That is our debate this morning. Joining us, Head of Republic, Graham Smith. Good morning, Graham. Good morning. And the Sunday Mirror's royal reporter, Sarah Robertson. Very good to see you. Sarah, could you just sort of outline to us what, what the, the whole concept, the whole vision is? Yes, so what the vision is, is King Charles is wanting to build 2,500 homes in the Kent town of Faversham. But what I'd like to say is it's <clears> not going to be built all at once. It's 120 homes per year over the next 20 years or so. So he's not coming in like some mass housing estate like Wimpy Homes or something like that and just plonking new builds up. That's not what he's doing. It's going to be very, very carefully structured to, to make sure the town is, is able to cope for the infrastructure, for the roads, schools. Yeah. He wants to cre create a new rural community because he's seen what's happening with the population rise, with obviously the high levels of immigration coming in, and that we need, people are complaining and saying they need more housing around the country. So like what he's done with Poundbury, which has been a very, very, very big success yeah, very down in tasteful. Dorset, very yeah. tasteful in, in keeping See, with the countryside. What, what, this is about a long-term plan to preserve the environment Yes, but also create, but also create a, community. a community. Because, because the thing is, developers come in and they build 2,000 houses. <clears throat> yes. And they become car cities. Exactly. Uh, you have to have a car then to get to exactly. some industrial estate where the supermarket is and whatever. But what he's doing is he will incorporate a, um, a, a, a post office, a, a bank, a whatever, whatever, and it all becomes a community mm. for this. And That's it. That's what he's trying to do. He's so passionate, is King Charles, about about what's going on with the countryside and the environment. These, these are uh, things he's felt strongly about for years, causes that he, he's, he's taken to his heart for years. And he's, his legacy, he, this is part of his legacy of what he wants to yeah. leave behind mm -hmm. when his reign's gone. And he wants to be seen as this pastoral king <clears throat> who is taking care of the countryside and the environment and, and the villagers in it. It's something he really strongly mm. believes in. And this is all to, to, to help those living okay. there. It's not against So you it. see him as a mender. Let's bring a in Graham mender. Smith. He very much sees him as a meddler. Look, how However good his intentions, you'd argue totally unqualified, not voted for in a democracy. What right does he have to dictate what kind of houses we're building? Is that what you'd, you'd say? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a bit odd to say that this is part of his vision as, a, as an environmentalist when he's building on farmland. Um, you know, well, they're sustainable not someone, homes, aren't they? That he wants and he's to building have. on farmland against the wishes of the people that already live in the area. Um, but I should also point out, it's no longer him doing it. This is William's project now. He, it's the Duchy of Cornwall um, uh, project. William took that over um, when Charles became king. Um, but like his father, he pretends to be an environmentalist. Both of them are um, incredible hypocrites on the environment. They have huge carbon footprints. Uh, they fly everywhere by a helicopter. And it's all for show. Um, and I'm sure that they believe they're sincere, but they don't seem to think that all these things count, uh, you know, um, apply to them that they can go on living their their huge carbon footprint uh, lifestyles whilst lecturing everybody else saying mm. you know even though we have no experience of living in villages and towns and having to go to the post office or the bank we're going to tell you what the ideal town looks like and plonky and these farmlands uh, right next to your village which is incredibly arrogant of them but this is about the duchy making profit um, which the duchy then doesn't pay corporation tax. All the profit then goes into William's pocket. Yeah, but he'll pocket. create the, the, this fantastic living area, Graham. And, um, well, that's, and, that's, a matter, that's very much a matter of uh, subjective opinion as to how fantastic it is. Whether or not there's a post office or a bank there will be determined by the post office and the bank, not by Charles or William. Well, you um, get the idea. The post office is on the high streets now place. anyway because they're all closing. Yeah, yeah. So well, King indeed, Charles but, is trying but, to bring them back to the community. Which is what you, well, which is what you really need to be doing, is building on Brownfield's sites and communities that already exist, not uh, doing this vanity project uh, that Charles and William seem to be keen on. Now, I should say also that, you know, we're talking about, oh, should they be allowed to do this? The Dutch is not um, uh, the planning laws and regulations and the environmental laws and regulations do not apply to the Dutchie because they demand exemptions from a huge swathe of laws, uh, which allows them to get away with what they want. Now, they do 
go through the planning process because it makes it all look um, okay and it all looks like it's being done properly. But if uh, they really wanted to do it, they could just turn up and, and build on those on that land and there's very little that anybody can do I, about it. Am I right they continue to demand exemptions from huge swathes of legislation the rest of us have to it, abide by. Is this duchy land that these houses are being built on? I wasn't clear whether the land belongs to them already because you say, why aren't they doing this building on, on brownfield sites, whatever? Presumably the royal family don't own any brownfield sites. They, they own loads of brownfield do sites. They? The duchy of Cornwall is a huge uh, property empire. It's not... Uh, is not Cornwall itself. It is a, an organisation that has that name and it has land right across um, southwest England and south England and Kent and in London. They own the Oval Cricket Ground um, and they are, it is essentially a corporation that makes a huge profit um, and passes that profit on to William without paying any corporation tax. And this is just another commercial project aimed at making money for the Duchy. No, I dis disagree there with you, Graham. I have to have to say that because you said there about building on brownfield sites. Yes, I do take your point there, but <clears throat> the king realizes that cities now are at bursting point. That cities aren't coping as they are as they are at the moment. And why should everybody be living in tiny squashed apartments in the way that you are suggesting? Sites doesn't mean what he's tiny trying to do is, is bring life back to rural areas. He wants to see more young families start up in rural areas. It's, it's very important. He's trying to protect the countryside. This is why he's doing this. As I've said, everything well, is done with the aim of trying to help the, the agricultural industry, to help the countryside, to help the environment, well, and to create yeah. something that's aesthetically pleasing. Who wants to live in those he's awful He's literally building on the agricultural land. Monstrosities he's that we've seen He's building on cities. agricultural land. You don't, you don't help agriculture by building on that land. I mean, the point is that you know, Charles hasn't the faintest idea how the rest of us live. He's never lived in these places. He never has to walk down the road to the nearest bank or go to the post office have to post you? a letter. He doesn't understand, of course. I mean, You've the point in, is have that. Have you we... lived in Poundbury and, and seen Poundbury and, and decided No, but I know that plenty of people have criticised it. But the point is, it, 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 he do doesn't people have live any there, Graham? understanding. Is that just people that, you know. The, the, I yes, think some people have lived there and criticised to... it, some people like it. But the point is, Charles doesn't have any personal understanding of these things. And what he's doing instead, or now William, as he's taken over since this project was launched, is simply saying, right, that we own that land, so let's plonk a bunch of houses on it and we'll make money off it. Okay. And then dressing it up as environmentalism and caring for the community, when uh, in fact the community William, doesn't want to. We've got to leave it there. And Thank you very much indeed. Land. Very good argument. Um, but... I don't listen. I just, I just don't think. No, I think I think the thing about Charles is that he cares and he will think about this uh, right through. And I would take a house in whatever development he was he was uh, he was looking to build. Yes, and I wouldn't mind living beside it as well. It'd be good for your property. Go on then. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Graham yes. definitely won't. Uh, that's the views of uh, of the panel this morning. Let us know what you think. Don't forget, you can have your say through our brand new system. We've got away uh, with the emails. Now we're on to our website. You go to gbnews.com forward slash your say and you can even interact with each other and, and share your views on there. Lots of them have been coming through this morning. Thank you very much for trying out our new system um, and have your say on the debate. Is the king a meddler or a mender?